So today we're going to talk about the time Eric Almarola won a race that he didn't even finish. And wasn't even at the track for the finish. We have to go back to 2007. June 23rd, 2007 to be precise. It was the AT&T 250 at Milwaukee Mile for the then NASCAR Bush Series, now NASCAR Xfinity Series. Almarola was driving for Joe Gibbs Racing and the number 20 Rockwell Chevy. He also spent time in the 18 car that season for Gibbs. Almarola was coming off back-to-back -to -back top 10 finishes at Nashville and Kentucky. Almarola's sixth place finish the previous week at Kentucky was the highest finish of his career in any of the top three NASCAR National Touring Series. Joe Gibbs submitted their entry to the race with Denny Hamlin listed on the 20 car. But, due to the NASCAR Cup Series being in Sonoma that same weekend, Gibbs had Eric Almarola in Milwaukee to practice and qualify the 20 car, with Hamlin then flying out for the race. Almarola posted a 30.069 in first practice that was good enough for second fastest. Just 88 thousandths of a second off Scott Wimmer for first. Almarola in final practice posted a 29.846. Again, second fastest and again behind Scott Wimmer. But this time by just 25 thousandths. In qualifying, there was a 5 thousandths of a second difference between first and second. But this time, Eric Almarola grabbed the top spot with a 29.608 with Jason Leffler second. Almarola said, quote, Man, two poles in a race at Milwaukee and I don't get to race. Something's got to be set for that. I'll sit on the pit box and watch. I've got a lot to learn about racing these bush cars. And Denny is really, really good. So I'll just sit there and listen and learn all I can from Denny. End quote. Eric Almarola had done his job. He practiced the car and got it fast and then even put it on pole. Despite the fact that with the planned driver change, Hamlin would have to start from the tail end of the field. So as I said, Gibbs listed Hamlin on the entry for the 20 car. The plan was always to have Hamlin fly to Milwaukee just prior to the race and get in the 20 car to race it. But that didn't quite go to plan. Denny Hamlin was flying to the track and his helicopter got to the track in time. But couldn't find a place to land prior to the start of the race because there was cars parked on the helicopter pad. They tried to land on the track, but NASCAR wouldn't allow them to do so. So the helicopter had to fly back to the airport. Eric Almarola climbed into the car and started the race. Shannon Spake of ESPN reported that Hamlin was receiving a police escort to the track. She also reported that Dave Rogers, crew chief on the 20 team, said that as long as Eric was comfortable in the car, they would leave him in it. He won the poll, they let him win the race. On lap 6, ESPN showed Denny Hamlin in the 20 pit in his fire suit. On lap 29, Denny Hamlin was in the pit of the 66 car because they were looking for someone to potentially re replace Stephen Wallace, who wasn't feeling good. Hamlin, in an interview with ESPN, said, quote, he thought that Almarola would do a good job for Rockwell and that taking him out of the car right now would be pretty disrespectful. End quote. Almarola not only got into the 20 car, but he started off right where he left off in qualifying. He led the first 43 laps before Carl Edwards took over. Almarola continued running in the top five, falling to a low of third. A caution came out on lap 58 for Ron Hornaday Jr., wrecking. And Joe Gibbs Racing made the decision to pull Eric Almarola from the car and replace him with Denny Hamlin. Rusty Wallace commented on ESPN that he thought it was a bad decision to replace Eric Almarola with Denny Hamlin. The 20 car went a lap down during the driver change, falling from 3rd to 30th. This was the first time Denny Hamlin had been in the car all weekend. On lap 100, ESPN reported that Joe Gibbs Racing declined to comment on the driver change. On lap 144, the caution came out for debris 
and Denny Hamlin was given the free pass to get his lap back that was lost during the driver swap. On lap 173, Denny Hamlin took over the lead and would hold that lead until lap 223, handing the lead over to Scott Wimmer, but Hamlin wasn't done yet. He retook the lead again on lap 238 and would hold it for the remaining 12 laps, picking up the win. After taking the checkered flag, Hamlin said on the radio, quote, Eric, this is your race car. I appreciate everything you did, end quote. Denny Hamlin took the checkered flag, but per NASCAR rules, the driver that started the race gets the credit. So Almarola picked up the win and the points despite not racing since lap 59. Rusty Wallace said he talked to Joe Gibbs Racing prior to the race about why they wanted to put Denny Hamlin in the car so bad, and they said it was a decision by Rockwell, who was based in Milwaukee. Denny Hamlin and Victory Lane commented on replacing Almarola, quote, I didn't want to do it. I knew he'd be really upset. As well as he was running at the time, we got to do what we got to do. It definitely wasn't my choice, end quote. He also said that Almarola did all the hard work. Eric Almarola was visibly upset after getting out of the car and left the track prior to the completion of the race and didn't partake in any of the victory celebration. It was the first time in the Bush series that a replacement driver won a race since Harry Gant replaced Jack Ingram at Darlington in 1985, and only the second time in the history of the NASCAR Bush series. Fellow Joe Gibbs Racing teammate Brad Coleman commented on the situation Quote, I can't help but feel sorry for him. End quote. Scott Wilmer also commented saying, quote, I was surprised they did it because Eric was running a good race. End quote. J.D. Gibbs commented, quote, I left a message for him Saturday night. I know he's upset. I would be too if I'm in his shoes. At the same time, I think he knows he's like a younger brother, he's like family, end quote. And also, quote, I told those guys as a group, if you think Denny can get in the car and win the race, let's go, let's do that. If you don't think he can do that, then let Eric run it out. Our guys kind of thought about it as a group and said, okay, we think Denny can run well and we're fast enough to win the race. That was a huge discouragement, of course, to, to Eric, end quote. J.D. Gibbs also stated that Almarola would receive the winner's check of $66,823. Eric Almarola would continue racing for Gibbs in the Bush Series, running seven more races, in 2007 picking up three top tens and one top five at Charlotte with a fourth place finish. Almarola would leave Gibbs at the conclusion of the season, moving to DEI in the Cup Series for 2008, sharing the eight car with Mark Martin, where he'd pick up one top 10 in 12 races. In 2016, Eric Almarola would go to Victory Lane at Daytona in the Xfinity Series, and Victory Lane he commented, For me, this is my first Xfinity Series win. Now I can say I've won in all three series. So this is just bushwhacking at its peak. Bushwhacking was the term used for cup drivers racing in the Bush Series, and dominating the series in the mid-2000s. Carl Edwards was actually leading the Bush Series points at this race. But when you start replacing Bush Series drivers mid-race with cup drivers, it's just gone way too far. The whole point of the Bush Series is to develop talent, and now we're taking out those young drivers that are the Bush Series regulars and replacing them with cup drivers. Gibbs has said they made the decision because they felt Hamlin could win. Okay, but then what does that say about Eric Almarola? What is he supposed to take away from that? That he's not good enough? He has every right to be mad. And if he's not mad about being replaced mid-race in a race that he qualified on pole and led 43 of the 59 laps, then he probably shouldn't be a race car driver anymore. Almarola doesn't consider this his first win, and why should he? He only ran the first 59 laps. Yeah, he was in great position to win, but Gibbs said nope. Second in both practices at pulling qualifying and leading 72.88% of the laps, that's just not good enough. 
Hamlin only led 64 laps of the 191 laps that he was on track for. Sure, Hamlin was a lap down, but that's kind of the point. Putting Hamlin in the car took them out of the race for a while. It got them off of TV, which is bad for Rockwell, the sponsor. But let's say Rockwell said, hey, you have to put Hamlin in the car. Why did Gibbs sign Almiro in the first place then if Rockwell wouldn't support him, knowing that this exact situation might occur? Why would Rockwell want to put themselves a lap down and back into 30th when they had a driver in that car that was running third? It just doesn't make sense. So now, you've heard from me, and now I want to hear from you. So what do you think about Denny Hamlin replacing Eric Almirola mid-race? Should Gibbs have allowed Almirola to finish the race? Do you think Almirola could have won? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, so long everybody.